Once upon a time, in a small village in India, there lived a poor boy by the name of Shiro. Shiro had lost his mother in a devastating flood, and he lived with his father who was a poor peasant. But there is something you need to know about young Shiro. He was smart, and like they say, smart people come up with smart solutions. One day, the poor peasant gave little money to Shiro and asked him to go to the market and do some trade. And that's what Shiro did. He thought of a great idea. Walking into a town market, he hired the most affordable place he could and opened a store. He spent the remaining of his money on paper, ink, and a pen. And over his store put a sign saying, Wisdom sold here. All around him in the busy marketplace, merchants owned large, attractive stores selling things that people needed like cloth, fruits, and vegetables. Shiro stood outside his little store all day calling out, Wisdom sold here! Come one, come all! Affordable price! People passing his store who had come to buy supplies for their homes and families thought he was odd, but amusing too. Oh, seems like you have ample wisdom to sell. Why don't you use some to help yourself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wise one, can you make my wife stop telling me what to do? <laughs> <laughs> but Shiro was patient and took it all with a smile. One day, a merchant's son, Sundar, was walking through the marketplace and heard him shouting, Wisdom! Get it here! Good prices! Wisdom? Now that's something I have never eaten! Hey, what is it that you're selling and what is the price for vessel? Uh, I don't sell wisdom by quantity. I sell it by quality. Oh, all right. I'd like a coin's worth of wisdom, please. Shiro smiled and put the coin in his pocket. Then he took out a piece of paper and taking a deep breath, wrote something. When he had finished, he folded the paper, waved his hand over it three times, stood up and gave it to the merchant's son. On the paper were the words, do not stand and watch two people quarreling. Keep this with you always. Sundar was very excited. He quickly went home and ran into the house shouting, Father, you won't believe what happened to me today. Come quick and see what I've bought. When his father read the paper, he was furious and screamed at his son. Who is the person who sold you this? Take me to him at once. Sundar told him about the boy and his little store. The father immediately went to the store. When Sundar's father reached the store, he saw Shiro and screamed, You! Thief! Me? Yes, you. You are the thief who sold this piece of nonsense to my son. I know he's a fool, but you're a thief. Return the coin he paid, or I'll call the police. Uh, if you don't like my product, you can return it. Give me back my product, and I'll return your money. I've just returned your goods. Sir, you have not returned my product. You've only returned the piece of paper. If you want your money, you must return my wisdom. You must sign an agreement saying that your son will never use my advice, that he will always stand and watch two people fighting. What? You must be joking! By then, the crowd had gathered around to watch the argument, and they agreed with Shiro. He's right, he has only returned the paper, not the idea. Yes, you're just trying to cheat the poor seller, taking his advice and not giving it back now. Uh, uh, okay, I will sign the document. And when the document was signed, Shiro returned the coin. The merchant was happy that he had saved his money. 
Now it so happened that the king of the region, King Dara, had a sister-in-law called Princess Tara, who had come to visit the royal palace. And it was well known that Princess Tara and King Dara's real sister, Princess Lena, could not bear each other. They were extremely jealous of each other and would argue about almost everything. One day, each of the princesses sent their maids to the marketplace. And call it the universe's amazing sense of humor, both the maids ended up going to the same store and at the same time. Excuse me, but I was just going to buy that. Ugh, you're a liar. I got it first. You got it first because you pushed in front of me and pounced on it. Excuse me, I didn't push in front of you. You did. My hand was just reaching out to pick it up and you rushed before I could pick it. I didn't. You did. I didn't. Did. Did not. And soon their voices got louder and louder. Sundar, who happened to be near the store at that time, saw it all happen in front of him and did not leave as his father had instructed him to. Remember, we've signed a document and must always watch people argue if you are nearby. Hey, you saw what she did, right? She pushed me. No, she is lying. I got here first. You saw that. You're my witness. No, he is my witness. Ha! Huh, we will see about that. And saying that, she left from the store. Oh, you so will. And so, when the two maids returned to the palace, they told their princesses all about the argument. The princesses were naturally very angry and decided to complain to the king. The maids had also told their princesses about the witness who had seen everything. Each princess ordered the merchant's son, Sundar, to be her maid's witness or have him put behind the bars. When King Dara heard about it, he sent a messenger to the merchant's house with the commands of the princesses. Sundar and his father were very worried when they received the commands. We need to see the boy who sells wisdom immediately and ask him what to do. They rushed to the little store and told Shiro about the whole story. Hmm, this is a tricky situation. I can help you, but it will cost 50 gold coins. The merchant immediately paid the amount. When they call you to the palace, pretend to be crazy. Pretend that you are a madman. You can keep blabbering silly things. And that is exactly what Sundar did. The next day when King Dara called the merchant's son to the palace as a witness, he behaved as Shiro had instructed him to. Eventually the king lost patience and thinking that Sundar was a madman, ordered him out of the palace. Sundar was delighted with this success and told everyone about Shiro's great wisdom. Soon he became quite popular and respected in the marketplace. But the merchant was unhappy that his son would now have to pretend to be a madman for the rest of his life or the king would find out and punish him. So the merchant and his son went back to Shiro for more wisdom. For another 50 coins, Shiro advised them to go back to the king at a carefully chosen time and tell him the whole story. If you approach him at the right time, when he's relaxed and in a good mood, he'll think it's funny and forgive you. But make sure he is in a merry mood. King Dara loved beautiful evenings. Everyone was aware of it. And so Sundar followed his advice. He went to the palace on a beautiful warm evening as the sun was setting. <sighs> this is it. This is my moment. The guards presented him to King Dara, and just as he thought, the ruler was in a very good mood. Haven't I seen you before? No. Well, your majesty. And then he went on to tell him the whole story and begged for the king's forgiveness for doing such a silly thing. 
<laughs> that is a funny story. <laughs> I forgive you. Don't worry. We all make mistakes sometimes. <laughs> When Sundar had left the palace, King Dara sat alone, thinking about the story. He was very curious about this man who sold wisdom. So he sent his messenger and asked him if he had any more wisdom to sell. Yes, sir. I have plenty of wisdom, especially to a king. But each advice will cost you 100,000 gold coins. King Dara didn't hesitate. He paid him 100,000 gold coins at once. Shiro, as usual, thought, and then looking very carefully at the king's face, took a deep breath and wrote on a piece of the king's special paper. After writing, he folded the piece of paper, waved his hand over it three times, and gave it to the king. On the piece of paper, King Dara read the words, Always think a lot before acting. Wow! That is a very wise advice! The king was astonished by those words and ordered his servants to paint them all over the palace. Shiro bowed down and then left. Some months later, King Dara became very sick. He didn't realize that one of his ministers was planning to dethrone him by making him severely sick. As part of his plan, he paid the royal doctor to put poison into his medicine. Seeing the shining pearls and gold coins, the doctor smiled and agreed. That night, when King Dara was taking his medicine, he lifted his golden cup up to his lips, and while he was about to drink the poison, the king lifted his eyes and saw the wisdom on the wall. Always think a lot before acting. Without suspecting anything, he thought about the words, lowered his cup to keep it on the desk to think about drinking it. The doctor who was standing there watching this started panicking. He trembled in fear, assuming that his king had guessed that his medicine was spiked. He immediately started crying. <laughs> forgive me, my king. <laughs> Please, forgive me. King Dar was taken aback and the doctor went on to tell him about the minister and his plans. He immediately called his guards and he had the doctor and the minister locked up. The next day, when the king woke up, he was feeling surprisingly well. Wow, what a beautiful morning to wake up to. If it weren't for the man who sells wisdom, I wouldn't be standing here. Grateful, he had his guards bring Shiro into his room. He thanked him for saving his life and made him his new minister and arranged for him to live in the palace. A fine apartment and beautiful clothes were prepared for him and Shiro lived happily in the palace as a wealthy man of honor and remained King Dara's most trusted advisor for the rest of his life. But he still continued giving his wisdom to the common people and would not charge any money from them and would always tell them Remember, knowledge is knowing what to say, wisdom is knowing when to say it. <laughs> <laughs>